Well, hello there. My name is Sometimes Heather and I play Elsa Gosselin. I've shown you quite a few dungeon runs in the past and today I wanted to talk about base game group dungeons a bit more. There are 16 group dungeons in the base game. Eight of these have two versions, one and two. Each dungeon can be tackled in normal or veteran difficulty. Base game group dungeons all have a recommended player level. Today, we'll focus on the first three, which are unlocked at player level 10, namely Fungal Grotto, Spindle Clutch, and Banished Cells. Our main question today is, can you solo it? Let's start from Fungal Grotto 1. I have been through this one approximately 15 million times, both in vet and normal. This is totally solvable, even in hard mode. Fungal Grotto 2 has not been featured on this channel. Let's venture in and see what happens. The place looks just like Fungal Grotto 1, but the enemies are a bit different. We find a huge spider as our first miniboss and should clear it with ease. Everything is nice and easy up until the first real boss, Kamin Bandu. A dumber assassin sounds like a no biggie, but Kamin is accompanied by four mages, Shadow Tormentors. These tormentors can chain you to the ground. In order to break free, you'll need to kill one of them. If you fail to do so, a shadowy blade will appear to instantly kill you. This mechanic makes Fungal Grotto 2 super difficult to solo. Let's see if Lillian does better with her monoliths. Not that much better, but I wouldn't deem this one impossible. You just need a lot of passive damage. I also tested my pet sock here, thinking animal friends might get rid of the tormentors. Sadly, they only attacked the boss while their army was down. The rest of the dungeon is relatively easy, so if you can get past Gamin Bandu, this is solvable. Let's go to Spindle Clutch next. I haven't shown either of these dungeons on my channel for two reasons. I'm afraid of spiders, and the last boss in Spindle Clutch 1 is a right pain to kill. The Whisperer has two mechanics that fear you, poison you, toss you around, and in general make you incapacitated unless you manage to block her attacks. I'm horrible at blocking, so here's what happens when you fail. Passive damage is a big hit in Spindle Clutch 1. All in all, easy to solo, but the Whisperer can be really annoying. Down for the count. Spindle Clutch 2 is a touch more challenging. Less spidery, though, I'm happy to report. This is also easy up until you need Bloodspawn, a rather large gargoyle. Apart from doing the basic gargoyle things, Bloodspawn can bring down parts of the cave ceiling. The parts he drops creep closer and closer, and if you fail to kill him fast enough, you're dead. This is doable, but be prepared for a fast paced battle. As we meet Praxin Duar, things get really interesting. At first, Praxin Duar seems to be a pretty mellow dude. He summons four waves of spectral enemies. First, a large spider swarm. Second, another spider swarm and a swarm of the nightmare. Third, we meet Widowmaker Nightmare. The Grapple Nightmare and a group of corrupted infantry nightmares. 
And last, we find ourselves faced with two corrupted healer nightmares and whisperer nightmare. These waves are timed. If you take too long, another will arrive to make your life difficult. After the fourth wave, Praxin himself will attack and he's got some nasty tricks up his sleeves. Lightning bolts and red lines that do a lot of damage we can live with, but that's not all, folks. Praxin also summons a red circle called Harrowing Ring. The ring moves, and if you're lucky enough to be trapped inside it, touching the walls will instantly kill you. To make things even more difficult, Praxin will drain your stamina and magicka, leaving you unable to use your abilities. Despite all his tricks, Praxin Duar is very much solvable. You just need to be careful and patient. The last boss in Spinal Clutch 2 is a vampire. After Praxin, this one is a piece of cake. No lie. All in all, Spinal Clutch 2 is totally solvable, but time consuming. Our last stop today is Banished Cells. We've been to Banished Cells 1 multiple times, so let's move straight to Banished Cells 2. Here, you can't skip all calls for the Hide Keepers, which you must kill, in order to proceed through locked doors. Don't worry, they're easy. The first real challenge is more of the Infernal, a quite tall Dardroth. More of the Infernal breathes fire at you and sets area of effect fires all over the chamber. If you take your time with this boss, you'll end up having the entire room in flames. Be prepared with some sort of a fire resistance trick. Before we get to the big boss, we meet Harvester sisters Sina and Vera. I really like this pair of bosses. They have simple mechanics and are therefore rather entertaining. Their sisters will summon feast orbs, which should be destroyed swiftly for the heal of the sisters. Also, note that one of them will have a damage shield while the other one is vulnerable. Do focus on the shield class one. And to top it all off, we have Hiking Lord Rilis. Along with the usual direct attacks, Rilis summons Dardroth, an abundance of Dardroth. They have a lot of hit points and just keep on coming. If you focus all your energy into killing the Dardroth, the battle will take forever. It might be better to concentrate on King Lord Rilis. He also summons Beast Orbs, which heal him. These should be destroyed properly. What makes this pattern both fun and annoying is that Kinlord Rilis can trap you inside a red or blue orb, which levitates you high above ground. This grants you a small break from battle, a chance to admire the views, and also a curse, which deals moderate overtime damage. To get rid of the curse, you should go and stand on a red or blue area on opposite sides of the battlefield, depending on the color of the levitating orb. I failed to do this, but in normal difficulty it doesn't matter that much. I can Lord Rilis is actually a fun boss to solo. All in all, Banished Cells 2 can't be solved. Not all dungeons in the base game are this easy. Next week, We'll delve deeper into Darkshade Caverns, Elden Hollow, and Wearest Sewers. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all later. Ta!